Welcome ladies and gentlemen to your notes over sequences and series and in today's video we're going to be talking about an arithmetic sequence. So what is an arithmetic sequence? It is a sequence in which the difference, let's see if I can add some notes here, the difference between any two consecutive terms is constant. So here's an example of an arithmetic sequence. In my first term, this is my first term, second term, third term, fourth term, fifth term, this will be my sixth term and my seventh term. In my first term, I have four. The second term is seven. What did I do to get from four to seven? I added three. Same thing, seven to 10, I'm adding three. And as you can see, I'm adding three each time. That difference is constant. So how would I find the values for the sixth term and the seventh term. Well, if I add three to the previous term, I'll get 19. And then if I add three again, I'll get 22. So we call that difference, the common difference, which is the difference D between any two consecutive terms. That's the common difference. So here's an example, one, three, five, seven. You can always subtract to find D or your common difference. So if I take one term and I subtract the previous term, I'll get my common difference. Seven minus five, I get two. So if that's constant, if it's an arithmetic sequence, it's constant. So I could also do five minus three and I'll still get two. So my common difference in this sequence is two. So let's talk about a recursive formula because that's what we're gonna be building in the next examples. What is a recursive formula? Any formula that relies on the previous term to find the value of the next term. So if you think about this sequence that we just talked about, I added two each and every time. Let me switch colors here. From one to get to three, I added two. Three to five, I added two. Five to seven, I added two. So what formula can we come up with that would help us um, determine the next term? or any term in the sequence. So a lot of what students really struggle with in with this concept is just the notations. What does all this stuff mean? It kind of looks like a different language. So let's go through some of what these terms mean. So n, in a, in a sequence, n represents the term's position in a sequence. the term's position in a sequence. So I like to give the analogy of what, where's your position? If you're standing in a line, what position are you in line? Are you second in line? Are you fifth in line? Are you seventh in line? What position are you? So you can kind of think of that when you think of these formulas. N is a term's position. Where does it fall in my sequence? So A sub N. This is the value of the term. Value of the term. So that's what that is. A sub N, value of the term. And I'm actually gonna skip over to this one right here. So A sub one, what would that mean? Well, what did I replace N with? I replaced it with one, and what does N mean? It's the term's position in a sequence. So if a sub n is the value of the term, then a sub one is gonna be the value of the first term. So a sub two would be the value of the second term. A sub 100 would be the value of the 100th term. And then here's this one right here. A sub n minus one. Hmm, well, that's the value of the previous term. If we think about it, when I take n right here, 
and I subtract 1, well, then I've got the term before it. So what's the value of the previous term? All right, let's move on to arithmetic sequences. Determine if the given sequences are arithmetic. If they are, identify the common difference and find the next three terms. So we've got to do a couple things. We have to see if they're ar arithmetic, if they are, find the common difference, then find the next three terms. Okay, so 13, 10, 7, and 4. Well, let's see. From 13 to 10, what are we doing? We're subtracting 3. We're subtracting 3 here. We're subtracting 3 here. Awesome. It's constant. It's every single one of them. Yes, it is arithmetic. My common difference is negative 3. And now let's identify the next three terms. So 4 minus 3 is going to be 1. 1 minus 3 is going to be negative 2. Negative 2 minus 3 is going to be negative 5. So here's the next three terms. 1, negative 2, and negative 5. Okay, looking at number 2. All right, so negative 9, negative 4, 1, and 6. Okay, negative 9 to negative 4, what am I doing? I'm adding 5 there, negative 4 to 1, I'm adding 5 there, 1 to 6, I'm adding 5. If you can't see that, you could always do negative 4 minus negative 9. Okay, so you could always do that, in which case you would get 5. So you can always subtract to find your common difference if it doesn't just kind of jump out at you. So yes, this is an arithmetic sequence. My common difference is 5. And the next three terms, if I add 5 to 6, what do I get? 11. And then if I add 5 more, what do I get? 16. And then if I add 5 more to that, what do I get? 21. Moving on. Number 3. 1 to 2, well, I'm adding 1. 2 to 4, I'm adding 2. 4 to 8, I'm adding 4, 8 to 16, I'm adding 8. Is that an arithmetic sequence? No. So we don't have to do anything else because it's not arithmetic. In the next one, 1 third to 2 thirds. Let's see. I'm adding 1 third there. 2 thirds to 1, well, if I add another third, I'll get 3 thirds, which is 1. I'm adding a third here. I'm adding a third here. I'm adding a third here. Yes, it is arithmetic. My common difference is one third. The next three terms would be what? Well, this right here is just six thirds. So the next term would be seven thirds. Then what? Eight thirds. Then nine thirds, which we could simplify to three. That's the next three terms in the sequence. So how do we find the nth term of an arithmetic sequence. Here's our little formula that we're given, and we're going to use it to find the nth term. So re recall that n is just the term number, so a sub n equals, we're going to take that first term, we're going to add it to our common difference times n minus 1. Okay, so let's, I'm going to keep that so I can see it, and let's get through these examples. Number 5. I've got 15, 23, and 31. So from 15 to 23, I'm adding 8. 23 to 31, I'm also adding 8. So let's identify the first term. The value of the first term is 15, and my common difference is 8. These are the two things that I need in order to write my formula. I need the value of the first term, and I need the common difference. So given our formula up here, let's plug in these values where they go. Okay, so a sub n equals, what do I need to write first? The value of the first term, which is 15, plus my common difference, which is 8, times n minus 1. And now let's go ahead and simplify this. So a sub n equals 15 plus, let's distribute that 8, 8n minus 8, and then what can we do to simplify it even further? I can combine like terms, 15 and negative 8, or 15 minus 8. And I'm going to write it kind of like in my slope-intercept form of a, of a linear equation, or standard form, if you will. 
a times n plus 7. This is my formula. There's the formula. So write an explicit formula for the given arithmetic sequence. Boom, done. But then what do we need to do? We need to find a sub 8. Okay, well, if a sub n equals 8n plus 7, then a sub 8 is going to equal 8 times 8 plus 7, which is 64 plus 7, which is what? What is 64 plus 7? 71. Done. Moving on to number 6. I'm going to switch colors here. All right, from negative 20 to negative 8, if you need to do your subtracting, you can. So we know we're going to need the value of the first term and the common difference. The value of the first term is negative 20. My common difference is I'm adding 12. Here, I'm adding 12 more. Here, I'm adding 12 more. My common difference is 12. So now let's plug in these values into our formula. A sub n equals, what's the value of the first term? Negative 20 plus common difference is 12 times n minus 1. And now let's simplify this. What do we do first? We distribute that 12 into every term. So a sub n equals negative 20 plus 12n minus 12. I'll give you a second to catch up. What do we do at this point? Let's combine like terms. So we're just simplifying this equation. a sub n equals 12n, negative 20, and negative 12 combines to make negative 32. And there's our formula. So now we need to find a sub 8. Well, if a sub n equals 12n minus 32, then a sub 8 equals 12 times 8 minus 32. And then let's just do a little bit at a time. 12 times 8, what is that? 96. Then 96 minus 32 is 64. I'll give you a second to catch up. You can always pause the video and or go back and just re-watch something. So let's look at our last two examples. Number seven, what do we need to write this formula, this recursive formula? I need the value of the first term and I need the common difference. Okay, what's the value of the first term? Negative three, and what's the common difference? You can pause this video right now and find the common difference. And if you wanna go ahead and plug in the values where you think they should go, I suggest doing that now. So negative 3 to 4, we're adding 7. 4 to 11, we're adding 7. So 7 is our common difference. If I plug in these values into my formula, a sub n is going to equal negative 3, which is a sub 1, plus my common difference of 7 times n minus 1. What do I do at this point? I'm going to distribute the 7 into every term. So a sub n equals negative 3 plus 7n minus 7. And now what do I do? Combine like terms. Negative 3 and negative 7 are my like terms. So 7n and then negative 3 and negative 7 combine to make negative 10. So there's my formula. But now we know we need to find a sub 8. What am I going to plug in for n? 8. I'm looking for the value of the 8th term. This formula will give me the value of any term. I could find the thousandth term in this sequence by plugging in 1,000 in for n. But I only need to find the 8th term. So 7 times 8 minus 10. What is 7 times 8? 56. And then 56 minus 10 is 46. Okay, moving on. Number eight. Oh no, decimals. Are you freaking out? Don't freak out. You can always subtract 0. 0.6 minus 0. 0.2. That's just 0. 0.4. That's all we're doing. 0. 0.4. You could do 1 minus 0. 0.6. You'll also get 0. 0.4. You could do 1.4 minus 1 and you also get 0. 0.4. 
So don't let those decimals scare you, and certainly don't let those fractions scare you, especially if you can use a calculator. So what's the value of the first term? 0.2. What's our common difference? 0.4. Let's plug it in to our formula. A sub n, value of the first term, 0.2, plus what's our common difference? 0.4 times n minus 1. So now what do I do? Distribute my 0.4. A sub n equals 0.2 plus 0.4n minus 0.4. And now what do I do? Combine like terms. 0.2 and negative 0.4 or 0.2 minus 0.4, however you want to look at it. So 0.4n and then 0.2 and negative 0.4 combine to make negative 0.2. So there's my formula. And now we need to find the value of the eighth term. So 0.4n, oh, 0.4, what am I plugging in for n? I'm plugging in 8. 0.4 times 8 minus 0 0.2. 0 0.4 times 8, what is that? 3.2. 3.2 minus 0.2 is 3. And that is the value of the eighth term. So a sub 8 is 3. And that concludes your notes over arithmetic sequences. I hope it was helpful.